you. At Big Data SV 2014 is brought to you by headline sponsors WAN Disco. We make Hadoop invincible. And Actian, accelerating Big Data 2.0. Hey, welcome back everyone to uh, Silicon Valley's Big Data event, Big Data SV, hashtag Big Data SV. Search on Twitter or go to crowdchat.net slash Big Data SV. Join the conversation, this is theCUBE. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined by my co-host Dave Vellante, the co-founder of wikibond.org. And we are covering all the action here in Silicon Valley and the Strata Conference right behind us across the street. And our next guest is Mike Hoskins, CTO Actian. Welcome back to theCUBE, we had him on Big Data NYC. Um, kind of at the end of the uh, end of the event, but we had a really engaging conversation, and now they have news uh, we want to dig into. Uh, first, uh, Mike, welcome back to the Cube. Uh, great to see you. Thank you, John. Thank you, Dave. It's good to be here. So, uh, one, we really appreciate uh, you coming on, also talking about your news and uh, you have. So, tell us first the news that you have. You guys released some news today, and, and where is you guys going technically, and what does that mean for today's market around pro proving the value of Hadoop? Uh, so 2014 is a really big year for uh, Actian. The, the news today, the announcement around Strata, is really a follow-on from two weeks ago when we announced the uh, Actian Analytics Platform. Uh, you know we've acquired uh, several technologies over the last couple of years. Uh, what we've done, and this is a steady evolution of uh, developing the products and the platform, is we've decided that having spent the $150 million to acquire you know, really next generation advanced technologies around data flow, around uh, the world's fastest columnar analytic databases, instead of doing like pretty much every other vendor does here and deliver those to the marketplace as a point product and then leave the customer to struggle with how it all comes together, we've assembled all of those next generation IP assets into a single platform. And we call that the Actian Analytics Platform. And so no matter how you want to connect to your data, uh, capture that data at scale, uh, drop it someplace and land it, maybe HDFS, push it through your, your analytic and data processing pipelines with data flow and then on into a, a next generation, incredibly fast columnar analytic database, or maybe just native analytics in Hadoop, maybe a, a graph database with uh, the semantic web and triple stores. And all of that has now been pulled together by Actian into a single coherent Actian analytics platform. So can you talk about those, those pieces? I mean, obviously Paracel and, and Pervasive were in there. Um, can you talk about the IP on which you've built that platform, those you sort of turned point products into that platform? Just refresh our memory there. Sure, the, the technology is really uh, game changing in, in pure performance, but also massively in price performance kinds of ways. I think of our first uh, major acquisition, Vector. Uh, vector for vectorizing your software stacks and your databases. Uh, we're now the title holder, world's fastest database at one terabyte. You can go to tpc.org and, and in second place and third place are Microsoft and Oracle having been squashed. We're 100% more faster than them, but, but, and probably on 1 20th the hardware. So you have to ask yourself, how does a, how does a fairly new young database you know, obliterate the giants of the database industry and price performance? And the answer is, it's modern software. It's software that understands that the gift from the hardware gods is, is incredible. A modern CPU architecture has pipeline processing, 15 functions queued up. It has L3 cache of 30 megabytes. The whole RAM a few decades ago was only 30 megabytes. Uh, vector processing is a first class citizen in the x86 instruction set. So what, what, would you, what would a database look like if you wrote a database from scratch now with next generation columnar technology, software only, scaling out on commodity hardware, uh, next generation compression, using vector technologies, using compiled queries, using advanced techniques? Well, the net result is you'd have technology that would be on a price performance basis devastating to traditional players in the industry. Well, that that education said, let's go out and find the other IP assets that are like that in the marketplace. Went to Pervasive, uh, found their integration plumbing, which allows us to fan in data from uh, any endpoints. Uh, found the Dataflow technology, which is the next generation pipelining technology, scales up perfectly for your server, scales out automatically on Hadoop, has visual tooling. And then we also acquired Paracel, which is uh, the world's fastest columnar analytic database, but scales out on commodity hardware as well, like Vector. So that. You know, you ask the question, these are IP assets, very modern, each of which had tens of millions of dollars spent on it, that are now under a single corporate umbrella and a single platform. And you said the number you threw up was, you said 150 million you guys invested? Is that the number? The total acquisition had? cost of all the companies, but those stacks, each of those stacks, tens of millions of dollars but, but, invested. But, but so, that's really not a lot of money to spend on those assets. I mean, you think about companies today, you're seeing companies getting funded, John, I mean, you know this better than I, 50, 60, 70 million dollar, you know, raises, you know, across there through A through C rounds. 
So, I mean, 150 million, it's a big chunk of change, obviously, right. but for those you know, three or four assets that you just mentioned, it's, it's actually you know, pretty productive use of, oh, of capital. Oh, it's awesome. Our board of directors is very clever, and they were very astute to recognize that those assets were out there, and they've now been assembled under a single corporate roof. How's the word getting out there? So let's give us, give, give us a little taste of like some of the success. You put the pieces together. You essentially build an engine. We like to use metaphors, sports or cards. Right? Sure. You got a new engine. What has that rendered itself? I and mean, what are some of the success? Can you share some of the things that you guys have done in the marketplace uh, around uh, you, your portfolio, which is now the engine? Sure, the best way to do that, I mean, I'm a technologist, so I'd love to share the, more of the technical virtues. Yeah, but look ahead. at our customers. We have over 100 customers already deployed on these next generation assets. I just had dinner a couple of weeks ago at an event with a CTO of Evernote. We all know Evernote. It's a classic uh, internet scale business. Uh, they they were, wanted to find out a way to convince more of their free users to become paid users. That's a classic data science problem. How do you do that? You mine through infinite log files to find the patterns and find the premonitions and find the, the willingness uh, to upgrade. And, and they did that. And they tried to do it with classic Hadoop and Hive and, of course, extremely low performing design time and runtime and ended up uh, adopting our matrix, our what used to be called Parixel is now called Matrix in the Actian Analytics platform. Uh, and that gave them sort of massive scalability and they were able to run their iterative algorithms and science and, and their impact on revenue directly, at, on revenue growth directly attributable to that deployment on our Matrix database was huge for them. That's just one example. We've got uh, customers like Autometrics who were able to use the integration plumbing and develop new business models around uh, next generation analytics on the automotive industry. Uh, uh, Office Max uh, was able to save you know, a huge amount of money by, by crushing and collapsing down the amount of time they spent on their analytic workloads. So I wonder if I could come back to that. We, we talked about 150, really not that much for, to, get a, to get a platform. Are you, do you, are you comfortable that, I mean, there may be some tuck-ins that you need to do, but are you pretty comfortable the platform is, is, is where you need it to be? You don't have to make any major acquisitions, or there's, are there still missing pieces in your view from a CTO perspective? Uh, so that's a good question, and I, I think one of the blessings of the transactions was that they're highly complementary, and so I've had a chance inside, outside to look at this, and there are always opportunities to, to acquire interesting add-on pieces of technology, and I, I don't think we're going to rest in that. Uh, but, you know, I got asked that question this morning uh, in a different uh, venue, and here's how I answered it. The, the challenge for customers now, in, in a young space like this big data analytics space, technologies are very immature, and people are, are going best of breed. There's not the big single place. And we're not a, a ring-fenced platform where everything is us and us only, and it's us or nobody else. We're a platform that plays easily with other corporate assets, and especially plays wonderfully with open source. You look at the juggernaut that is Hadoop, and some of the cool technologies coming in the open source space. So I think... It's not so much acquisition and tuck-in, it's finding uh, partner technologies, both commercial and open source, that we can play friendly with. For example, uh, our Hadoop stack uh, already interfaces with high degrees of parallelism with Flume. We just wrote Kafka interfaces. We've got the world's fastest loader-unloader for HBase, for example. So we're big believers in, in Hadoop, for example, and the open source movement. And I think we're going to see uh, the Acting Analytics platform coexist nicely with other modern advanced technologies to deliver the analytic goodness to the customer. So Mike, as you know, you know the best technology doesn't always win. So when you talked uh, uh, earlier about some of the benchmark data and smoking some of the more traditional guys, but those traditional guys, they have a way, they have that magic dust that they, you know, they, they hypnotize their customers and you know, the customers will keep sort of buying from them. So how, what gives you confidence that you can, you can unseat or how will you sort of migrate customers? Can we, I wonder if you could talk about that a little bit. Sure, if you look at some of our customers again and, and the success they've had, it isn't just about the technology, and, and, and I'll come back to that. But if, you know, I, I can think of a, of a top 10 worldwide bank uh, that, that benchmarked us against Natiza, for example, and we were hundreds of times more price performant. I mean, the cost takeout opportunities to migrate a workload to a modern next generation technology like ours is just stunning. So whether it's revenue optimization or cost takeout or, or risk mitigation, uh, it doesn't matter. The, the, if you get to, an, to a point where your platform enjoys you know, high levels of visual tooling, native execution against the data on Hadoop, we've got you know, one of the world's first Yarn certified engines executing post map reduce uh, in the Hadoop platform. When you get to that level, it is hugely compelling to customers. But you're right, it's not about the benchmarks. What do they want to do? We have a, a retail partner in India, one of the largest retail companies in India, 7,000 locations. They were using competitor technology. In that case, I think it was, it was Green Plum. Uh, queries were taking forever. They moved to the Actian Analytics platform, collapsed the runtime, and they're now doing marketing optimization and merchandising optimization almost to the minute. 
uh, because they can, and what a difference that makes to their business. So uh, w whether you're, you're doing retail analytics like, like Office Max and, and Future Group or healthcare analytics, this, this time compression means you can drive better business decisions. So some of the market. fundamentals that you'd look for, big market, you got that, check, we just quantified that with you know, Wikibon today, headed toward 50 billion, you know, 18 wow. billion today. You know, so that's exciting. 10x better, you got that, it, it looks like. The other is you know, experience and execution prowess and ethos. So I wonder I wanted if you could talk about your ability to retain talent from some of these assets that you've brought in. You know, some of the innovators, yeah. you know, some of the disruptors. Have you been able to, 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 to keep those guys? Um, you know, you're, you're, I think, an example. Um, <laughs> maybe talk about that a little bit. So it is a challenge always in this space. Uh, it's, it's intensely competitive. We've done very well. I just heard from an engineering team uh, where the product manager couldn't find a place to sit in a cube today because <laughs> there's been so much recruiting lately as our staff is growing in one of our database technologies. So that's exciting. Um, I think, I mean, there's something that people may not know about Actian. Uh, in addition to being sort of this young tiger with big data and analytics where we think we have, especially with the analytic platform, a multi-year lead, uh, we're a very well-established company. Right. We're about 140 million in sales. We're one of the largest private software companies in the world. Uh, we have 10,000 plus customers historically. We have product lines that have been around for 30 plus years. We answer the phone in every major geography in the world. And so we're not, we're not a lumbering behemoth you know, that's billions that is lurching and getting in its own ways, but we're also not one of the startups, 95% of whom might go poof risk. And so we feel we've got a great balance there of heft, seriousness, uh, strong history of, of data expertise in the marketplace, and an investment in a portfolio that is going to be game changing in, in, I think, in the coming years. Of Mike, I got to ask you about uh, just kind of the, the platform or architectural vision. What is your vision and what are folks out there that might have different visions around the preferred future? Is it going to be more horizontally encapsulating other elements? Dave and I talk about the data center being the API of the future. Right. How are services going to work with all these subsystems? And you have things like HANA out there, where HANA database is proprietary with SAP, and you've got open source stuff out there. You've got all these different elements. Is there going to be a layer on top? Um, as an architecture or something else? What do you see as that, that preferred architecture? Uh, so I, I get the luxury as CTO at Actian to run something called the Innovation Lab, where I have spent many years contemplating that exact issue. I now have a new toy, which is the Actian Analytics Platform, which as I said, is an end-to-end -end platform for capturing and analyzing and acting on data at scale. So I've actually said, what would a solution architecture look like if I had the perfect platform that could you know, have massive parallelism inherently in it and scale sort of effortlessly for any data volumes. And it looks something like this. Uh, and I think data flow and the notion that data is flowing is an important. We're instrumenting the universe. We're about to hit the backbreaking wave of machine generated data. So the digital data tap has been turned on. It will never be turned off again in the rest of time. Which means almost every architecture we have right now that's classic BI architecture, too static, too rigid, too brittle, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be overwhelmed with this river of data. So architectures must be more streaming oriented. They must be able to capture data at any scale. So think fan-in collection frameworks. They have to then land that data someplace, HDFS, perhaps the economical place. And then I think we're going to see what I call analytic pipelines. There's been 30 years of focus on operational workloads. I hear this every time when I go to C IT and CIOs. They're thirsty for a new generation of analytic applications. They want to they change their business processes. They want to crush fraud and they want to get revenue optimization going. They want to find the bad guys and reward the good guys and stop customer churn. And these are the business outcomes that they want. And they know that analytic gold is in that mountain of data, but how do you get from the mountain of raw data to the analytic outcomes? Well, you have to be able to capture that data at scale, land it, you have to be able to push it through your Hadoop pipelines. We have that data flow technology that with visual tooling allows us to do any kind of data preparation at scale, uh, any kind of data cleansing, enrichment. We don't use MapReduce, we're much higher in the stack than that, so kind of like Google left MapReduce long ago, Yarn allows other execution engines to come in, and I think, and this is the big idea, we will see a fan out of new analytic techniques. So clearly we will load uh, columnar analytic databases, but we may want to leave the data in HDFS and do deep iterative data mining and machine learning algorithms on it. Uh, Barry Zane, the founder of, uh, of Netizen and Perixel is with us. He's now got a new triple store, a semantic web database. You put the data in a graph database and the data can talk to you. The graphing clusters and affinity relationships emerge spontaneously. We, so, love, yeah. we love that affinity rank uh, algorithm that we have uh, with our uh, crowd chat. But I got to ask you, is like, let's take HANA for instance, you know, from SAP. That's like a database looking for a problem. 
um, and does solve a lot of problems. The use cases are pretty specific. They've got some well-documented use cases. But what you just described is outcome-specific solutions that need different architectures or technologies based upon the problem. So is the world shifting completely to the world of outcome drives technology or technology is available to solve an outcome? Well, sadly, we live in an industry where technology has driven too much of the equation, and I think we're going to see a shift. I mean, it used to be just big data, now it's big data and analytics. I predict that it'll be all about the analytics. Uh, customers are, are looking for this, this holy grail of closed loop analytics. How do, I, how do I generate new insights and new patterns and new predictive models out of my data and then promote those to analytically enable my business processes so that I can make ever more timely and accurate decisions regardless of my domain. And that takes this notion of a continuous pipeline of raw data coming in at incredible scale, of being machined and refined into high quality, optimized analytic methods and outcomes. And then you feed those analytic outcomes continuously into your business processes. So you asked about HANA, I, I really think that's a more traditional view where, you know, where data goes to die. It's just you, you work, 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 and then it just sits there. And my vision is much more of a constant flow of data where you have to be ready to eat lots of scale and complexity, and then you need to use optimized analytics to enable and infuse your business processes. And that's not a one-size-fits-all. And that's why I like you know, an explosion of analytic applications. And, and I, I think our platform is geared very well for building those pipelines and analytic applications. Data, Dave and I have been talking about this concept of data fusion, you know, you know, that's been kicked around the industry of fusing data together. Is that down the road where you're enabling those kinds of analytics? Or is that kind of <laughs> fuse, capture, then fuse? I mean, how does, what, is, what does data fusion mean? So it's, it's a great question. It's actually uh, front and center in our innovation lab right now. So it's earlier in the pipe. Uh, you're capturing, if, if you know the sensor data revolution and machine generated data, there's a popular phrase there, sensor data fusion, where it's actually uh, stickier and used more regularly than in our, our traditional structured data world. But it means the same thing. It means when you're pulling data from multiple sources, there are opportunities to correlate that data across what I consider immutable dimensions. So who, what, when, where. You know, what was the timestamp on Earth when that digital data event was created? What was the geolocation where it was created? What was the app that created it? What was the log file type format that created it? And if I know these core metadata elements, what I call immutable dimensions, then I can begin to fuse the data into a consistent single view of that digital data event so that it can transfer down the analytic pipeline. And, and if you really want to get interested, uh, think ontologies and think the opportunity as data becomes more standardized for us to, to fuse the data based on standard uh, metadata dictionaries and ontologies. And, and yeah, I think it's earlier in the pipe and it's a very important, in the next generation of analytic applications, I think data fusion is Is this critical. the telegraph of where, where it's going to go, the tell sign for the machine learning and automation, a lot of the AI kind of personalization? Is that kind of where this is leading? I think it is. I think that's at the far end of the pipe. It's the deepest science. But yeah, your challenge, if you want to build a new generation of analytic applications, then your ch and, and analytic gold is the outcome. I need these new methods, these outcomes. I need to drive my business processes ever more efficiently. Then I have to capture the data, fuse it, push it through, and then apply advanced analytics to it. Not your hindsight, your backwards looking, dashboards are good and OLAPs are good and cubes are good, but there's predictive power. One of our partners, Opera Solutions, you may know, they're one of the sure. really good companies. They build a lot of their stuff on our stuff. We're partnering with them uh, all over the world. It's very exciting. Uh, they talk about finding the predictive signal in your data. And I love that phrase because it's in there, which means kind of, you know, it's a wheat and chaff. You know, get rid of the chaff, find the wheat, find the essence, find the analytic drivers in that data, the insights and predictive <laughs> models that you can then stick into your business processes and defeat your competition. You, you've, I, I know we got to go, John, but you called it master data ubiquity, and you, know, you hear people talk about single version of the truth, and, and a lot of people say, well, we're going to be further away from the single version of the truth than, than ever with big data, but what you're talking about, this notion, this concept of, of data fusion, is really a new type of single version of the truth. It's not reporting, it's not, you know, like you say, looking back, what my quarter looked like, and you know, what the financial data looks like. It's predicting based upon you know, data that you can, you can trust, and then, the, and then driving outcomes that are dramatically more productive than your competitors, right? That's, that's to me the difference here, is that everybody can, I mean, IBM and Oracle and, and all, all of the established vendors, they're going to be able to say, hey, we can drive business outcomes too. What your, your premise is, 
that you need new architectures to drive Absolutely. business outcomes Absolutely. that are going to drive competitive advantage greater than the guys doing sort of the old way. That's your premise. Yeah, I'll, I'll assert it categorically. The scale and complexity of big data and machine-generated data has only just begun. will break the back of the legacy software industry. And yes, we need new plumbing. We need new IP stacks. We need new solution architectures and new platforms. And, and, and let's let these platforms be driven by the high value end of the pipe, the analytic outcome. Let's talk to businesses about whether they're doing revenue cycle optimization in healthcare or seat pricing optimizations in the logistics industry or preventive maintenance in the logistics industry or trying to do disease prediction in, in healthcare or fraud detection or risk mitigation. And, and it, all of these are, you know, and, and this is the early days. Right now, we, you look at the ROI our customers get when they implement these, these analytically enabled business processes and it's off the charts. Mm -hmm. Now, 10 years from now, that might be harder to get, that, that monster game, but right now, it's there for the taking. But you do have to look at a new generation, exactly like you said, of architectures, of analytic workloads and applications. And I, I think a lot of the, the themes that, we're, that we've acquired, our IP stacks, and a lot of the thinking around the Acting Analytics platform is spot on for a new generation of analytic applications. Mike Hoskins, great conversation. Remember, I remember uh, in New York, very, uh, uh, unforgettable conversation, very riveting. Uh, love the vision. Uh, we're in a technology confluence of a lot of things happening. I think the, the methods and some of the outcomes are going to drive huge innovations. Data fusion, we love that as well. Um, great to see you doing some great work. And always great to have you on the Cube. That's some that's some tech athlete tech talk right here on the Cube, which we love. This is the Big Data SV. We're here in Silicon Valley covering Strata Conference, all the activities in the Big Data world. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. We'll be right back. This is the Cube. <laughs>